the base case for uh, 2030 was roughly $650,000. However, what has just happened, the green light from the SEC, we believe will cause the institutional participation to move towards the bull end of our set of assumptions, which was closer to the 5% asset allocation to Bitcoin over time. So we think that probability has gone up. So the probability of the bull case, the 1.5 million has gone up. Last year, ARK Invest issued an optimistic price forecast for Bitcoin, envisioning its value reaching $1.5 million per coin. With the recent approval from the SEC, their updated analysis indicates that if institutional investors were to allocate just 5% of their portfolios to Bitcoin, it could drive the price of one Bitcoin to surpass $2.3 million. This latest projection comes from Kathy Wood in her recent interview, where she delved into Bitcoin's diverse roles as both a risk-on and risk-off asset. She underscored the significance of Bitcoin's volatility, portraying it as the cost of entry into this emerging asset class. Additionally, she shared insights on cryptocurrencies as a digital financial system, reflecting on ARK's early involvement with Bitcoin in 2015 when its value was a mere $250 per coin. Despite skepticism from traditional asset managers, Kathy's astute observation during events like the Greek crisis led her to view Bitcoin as a risk-off asset alongside its risk-on nature. Stay tuned till the end of the video, where Kathy elucidates on Bitcoin having and its potential impact on the broader market dynamics. Ever feel like you're wasting your money on things that don't really matter? Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out on this 2025 bull run. Educate yourself now. Don't spend $12.50 on junk. Educate yourself on how to be successful in crypto using our crypto cheat guide. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Visit the website now on the link in the description for your exclusive copy. Start your journey to crypto success today. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. We took our first exposure to Bitcoin in 2015. It was $250 and traditional asset managers and others in the ETF space uh, were making fun of that decision. And so we paid very close attention to the daily moves. And at the time, uh, Greece was threatening to leave uh, the, the European Union. And we were worried about, uh, you know, a relapse into the European sovereign debt crisis. Bitcoin might be a risk off asset as well as a risk on mm -hmm. asset. And that was confirmed last year during the regional bank crisis when regional banks imploded and Bitcoin went up 40 to 50%. I think that realization that Bitcoin is not only a risk on asset, you know, a technology as technology is, but it is a risk off asset in terms of counterparty risk. There's no counterparty risk here like there is in the banking system. You're hitting on something important when you mention those companies. I know I put them in the report. Their revenue growth is negative. Now, a large part of that is the rest of the world. And now we're getting flash points. Nigerian Naira down two thirds. This is one of the wealthiest countries in Africa and their population has lost two thirds of its purchasing power in dollar terms and probably two thirds of its wealth because they tend not to be well diversified. Uh, you had Egypt just devalue by 40%. This has all happened since I wrote that paper, uh, the 40% decline. So we're seeing, and, and I actually think Bitcoin might be a reason for this. Mm. You know, many people now understand they can have a hedge against inflation and, as I said, deflation um, uh, associated with counterparty risk uh, with some Bitcoin. And I think this could be causing uh, a little bit of a domino effect. I think that this idea that Bitcoin is an insurance policy is important and may be behind some of the devaluations we're going to see, we're seeing out there. I think there is a global recession underway. You you said it, and in the U.S., the technologies uh, versus the economy, uh, these are booming technologies. When you get a 
technologically enabled innovation, it's highly deflationary. And we've got these five platforms. We haven't seen anything like this since the late 1800s, early 1900s. Telephone, electricity, internal combustion engine, deflationary period. Right. And those were deflationary technologies. So we're seeing a lot of cross currents in the US. It's very confusing. In the employment report, you get uh, non farm payroll employment moving up, you get household employment moving down. That's interesting. We've lost a million jobs, and that household employment is what feeds into the unemployment rate. Even with GDP, if you look at real GDP on a year over year basis, it's up more than 3%. But if you look at its identity, gross domestic income, they should equal one another. That one's slightly down on a year over year、mm. basis. And I think what's happening is there could be some immigration、uh, distortions here. We're trying to figure that out. But also, innovation, because it's moving so rapidly, there are the, the measurement systems in place right now were born in the industrial age, and they're trying to catch up. Uh, and so we would not be surprised at the end. It's going to feel a little chaotic, and you're going to have you know, conflicting cross currents, I think, while this is going on. But when all is said and done, we think these technologies are now beginning to move the needle, and that real growth this is what we mean by economic boom、uh, as deflation. Really happen. The Fed、yeah. wants 2% inflation, they're going to get negative inflation. As that happens,、uh, there will be very significant unit growth from these new technologies, but there will also be what's known as creative destruction if you've studied Schumpeter.、Uh, and、uh, a lot of companies think traditional autos, internal combustion engine. If we're right, electric vehicle prices keep going down to the $20,000 to $25,000 range. The traditional auto market is out of business. So that's creative destruction. When you ask that question, where else would we go? Alluding to is if you look at the SP 500 and NASDAQ, and you look at what's at the top of、uh, each of those, you know, the companies there are, are, they've hit that level because of past success. And if the world is going to be disrupted and you know, the traditional world order is going to be disintermediated, that's probably not the place to go. However, and we've been fighting this battle for 10 years, including Bitcoin, we are providing exposures to the new innovation. The world is going to work. And what has happened. And it's unfortunate. It's, I think it's the most massive misallocation of capital in history. Is after the tech and telecom bust. And what did that mean to the traditional world? It meant, let me get close to my benchmark. Let me get close to the SP 500. Let me get close to the NASDAQ. In fact, I've seen conversations、uh, among portfolio managers and other firms where, you know, the benchmark is their bogey. And shall I be? 10 basis points above on this name or 10 below, that's a ridiculous way to invest. It's absolutely ridiculous. You need to take a white sheet of paper and say, what is the world going to look like? Not what has happened and what does the world look like? And especially given how quickly these technologies are moving. And The great thing for, for ARC in terms of everything that we do, and I know it's true for 21 shares, but they only do digital assets. But the great thing for us is there is a new investor who understands and accepts this notion that volatility is part of the price you pay、uh, for this new asset class. And、we've been referred to just our basic ETFs and in innovation as a new asset class as well. That、mm. is, we're not a new asset class. These are equities, Bitcoin and digital assets. That's a new asset class. But now we have an investor that understands that volatility is part of what you need to expect. They are. I'm not saying they're comfortable with the downside volatility. They love the upside volatility. Volatility is a very good thing on the upside. So I think this whole space, this new asset class, is helping、um, investors understand what we've been trying to communicate for the last 10 years.、Hmm. Bitcoin, of course, but also 
through these other innovation platforms. DeFi can sound intimidating to people, defiant and so forth. So he was saying, look, the way to help people understand what this is, this is the internet financial system, how young people are behaving. Even the most seasoned investors out there, they have children or grandchildren, and they're looking at how they spend their time and they know more than half of their leisure time or discretionary time is spent online. And so this notion, social status moving online with these immutable digital assets, they're not doing it, but they see their children and grandchildren doing it. When you think about the internet, how much it has been built out over the past 30 years, that's kind of priming the pump. And now you're just putting this IFS in, this internet financial system. In Bitcoin, you're talking about a global monetary system. You're talking about a technology and you're talking about store of value. And we think ultimately uh, it will play all three roles of money. So you've got three major. So monetary system, technology, new asset class. Bitcoin is the most secure. And, you know, I think when people ask us, OK, how's this all going to shake out? Is Bitcoin going to take usurp the dollar's role as the world's reserve currency? We don't think so. We think the strong are going to get stronger. And what I mentioned earlier, the emerging market currencies are probably where you're going to see a lot of defections. So it's a very big idea uh, and we think it will be the biggest by far, it will dominate the crypto asset ecosystem. I'm not sure if you feel uh, as strongly about that. I think our team does. So it will account, we think, for more than half the crypto asset ecosystem ultimately. Here's Kathy Wood discussing Bitcoin's dual nature as both a risk on and risk off asset alongside the increasing importance of integrating new technologies into investment portfolios. As traditional companies and economies encounter challenges, the ascent of innovative technologies such as AI, robotics, and cryptocurrencies introduces both opportunities and hurdles for investors. Kathy stresses the evolving acceptance of crypto among institutional investors, highlighting a gradual shift from skepticism to cautious exploration. She underscores the necessity for investors to adapt to evolving market dynamics and embrace innovative concepts, acknowledging the historical precedent of technological revolutions reshaping investment landscapes. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.